Greetings, and welcome to A Fireside Chat. This is your host, Lance White, also known as the Zany Mystic. Tonight I have a very special guest. Her name is Mahala Gale. Mahala is an astrologer, writer, lecturer, minister, and one of the founders of the Asclepius Light Center. She's the editor of the Asclepius Light Center newsletter since 1988 and writer and editor of the Planet Alert articles. <clears throat> Mahala has extensively studied the book of Revelation in the Bible and other prophecies and correlates them uh, and their relationship to the stars. She's recently been on Whitley Strieber's Unknown Country and James Gilliland's broadcast here at BBS Radio. So let's welcome Mahala to the show. Hi, Mahala. How are you? Um, I'm great. How about you? I'm hot. <laughs> it was over 100 degrees here today. Do you wow. think that was because of the stars? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is because um, we're, there's going to be a hot summer. Um, like I saw a map in the um, on the TV, you know, and it showed the southwest and how it's the drought and the heat and everything. Uh -huh. And that is because of the planets, because um, Jupiter's in a fire sign, Saturn's in a fire sign, and they're right over that area. Oh. So it will continue, and there'll be lots of fires this summer. Wow. Which is unfortunate, but, you know, the handwriting's on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I kind of regret in some ways that I didn't study astrology more because now I'm seeing how powerful that information can be. I mean, you can actually de determine from the position of the stars um, a lot of what's going to happen and what is happening. Isn't that true? Oh, yes. It totally amazes me. Mm. I've been studying for quite a while right now, and... And it just, it just continues to amaze me. Hmm. It is very accurate. Mm -hmm. It was one of the um, sciences that was held in high esteem, you know, quite a while ago before um, the church kind of put a uh, shutdown on it. Right. I guess they didn't want any uh, any real information getting out. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know, then that includes the divine feminine as well. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, we spoke earlier. I, we had a chance to speak on the phone earlier, and there was a lot of exciting stuff that's coming up uh, soon. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to segue into that. Um, uh -huh. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to talk about what, what's happening right now, especially Good. on the 777. Good. Good. Then let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is a, a very exciting time um, because, well, at this time every year, um, the sun lines up with the star Sirius. Okay. And this lines up with our government. And that's why the uh, Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4th in okay. 1776. All right. And um, that puts the sun, uh, because that's where Sirius is in the heavens. Uh-huh. And that's um, why the city of Washington, D.C. was laid out by the Masons. Uh -huh. You know, everything is just, just according to mathematical code. It's very interesting if you study a little bit of it. Uh -huh. And so Sirius has been kind of like our guiding, one of our guiding stars for a long time. Okay. And the Egyptians really um, honored that star, and, and they always looked for um, what started their new year was... Uh, the helical rising of Sirius, which happens on July 26th. And huh. that's also the beginning of the dream spell Mayan calendar. And so there's two different events but that happen um, with Sirius, you know. But the Egyptians, they always uh, look for that, you know, to start their new year on July 26th. Uh -huh. so right now, as we're speaking, um, the sun is lined up with the star Sirius. Huh. And a Stargate opened there a couple of years ago, and I happened to be in Washington, D.C. right after that happened. Uh huh. And it was totally amazing because here we were in a city that there's been a lot of challenges with, and a lot of people don't like what's going on with our government right now. Right. And here I am right in the middle of the city with all of this love energy pouring in. Really? And it was amazing. I, I was in the love vibration for the whole week. Wow. For nine days I was there. And well, I even it's... felt it when I came back, and wow. so I, I must be really attuned to that, that energy. Yeah, yeah. So it was actually tangible. You could feel the vibration of it. Oh, yes. Huh. Very much so. 
it just brought me to tears all week. Wow. And I thought, wow, this is just totally amazing. Well, yeah. that's kind of the way that I, that's what I look for when there's some kind of Stargate opening. But so far, <clears throat> you know, I've either missed them or my vibration hasn't been high enough to feel it in that manner. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, it is really amazing if you happen to be right in one. But, you know, I don't think that, that everyone there felt it, you know? Right. Um, right. You probably have to be on a certain frequency of the Stargate in order to feel it. Right. For that to happen. Um, but but right now I have, like, a chart for me in front of me here uh-huh. for July 7th of 2007. Okay, so that's just coming up, what, in a couple of days? Yes, this is Saturday. Okay. And this is this is a major date. There've been all kinds of people that have have been are having all kinds of events this weekend. Uh huh. I know. Like I live in Seattle, and and here in Seattle, um, Tom Kenyon and his group will be here. Um, the Moody Blues will be here. Oh my goodness. Uh, and there's um, in various places around the world, there's all these events set up for for Saturday. Wow. And so at 11.11 on Saturday morning, Pacific uh, Daylight Time, the moon will be triggering off off this energy. And and there's an, another thing that goes along with this uh-huh. is because um, there's a planet that uh, was destroyed in our, our galaxy a while back um, called Maldek. Oh, yeah. I've heard and, that. And that threw a whole solar system off balance. Because, like, in Genesis, it says, like, in the beginning, the planets sang together. Uh-huh. And so they all have frequencies, and they made a beautiful um, music. And then when the planet Meltek was destroyed, um, we had a lost chord in our solar system. Oh. And so it's been my understanding that the Masters of Light have been working for a long time, and this is in the Leo constellation, mm-hmm. um, to heal this, this energy in the Leo constellation. And um, it's my understanding that that was healed uh, two or three years ago. Okay. And then Saturn, in our our solar system, you know, Saturn went into Leo. And so that it's been there for the last couple of years. Uh-huh. And so now it's our turn to heal this energy. Well, with um, this Stargate and Sirius opening and Mercury being retrograde, <laughs> which brings things from the past, back up for us to look at, uh-huh. um, one of the things that's bringing up is uh, the energy from um, Atlantis. Oh. And on 7-7, Saturday, um, Mars will be on 9 degrees Taurus, and that is the degree of Atlantis, according to my degree book, Whoa. astrology. And so ancient knowledge from Atlantis will surface um, during this time period. And wow. then I got an email just last, or night before last, uh-huh. um, and this is one that Aluna Joy put out. Okay. And in it, I'll quote a little bit, what she says is from the June solstice, June 21st, to the Persades meter shower of August 12th is a rare window of opportunity to um, uh, heal this this um, energy. Uh-huh. Um, elders say that we are victorious, but it's not time to sit back in the spiritual easy chair and wait <laughs> for this glorious future to rise. Uh, right. We must take action. Spirit helps those who help themselves. Mm-hmm. Within this window is the exact frequency or echo of time in history where massive misuses of power took place. Mm. During these times, we lost the planet Maldek which is now our asteroid belt. Mm-hmm. We can still see part of this planet every August with the Persades near shower. Hmm. We have witnessed the fall of Atlantis and been dealing with its reproductions up to this time. Um, and so the time being it's cyclic in nature, you know how it goes in a circle? Right. And because we are circumnavigating through a time where a misuse of power took place over and over again, uh-huh. it's time to break this cycle. Yeah. And now we have the greatest opportunity to heal these past errors in present time. And when we heal these past errors, we can end war and have peace on earth. And so by doing this, we can heal that lost cord that's in our solar system. And um, there's another man that's been doing a lot of work on the mathematical um, work, you know, on, on the creation of the universe. Okay. And the information that those scientists have come up with is that the love frequency is on 528 hertz. Huh. 
And when you convert this to sound, it's uh, 518 um, nanometers or whatever they measure sound by, uh -huh. which is the color of green. Huh. And, and they have proven that this energy is coming in right now from our galactic center. Wow. With Pluto being conjuncted. And, and so it, it, we've had a massive influx of, of energy um, coming into our heart chakra. Huh. And the sign of Leo um, is where the misuse of the, the sound was. I rule the heart and it rules the love vibration. Wow. And on a different note, I know a lot of people have been having challenges with their heart. Uh huh. You know, like because so much energy coming in. Uh huh. Like their heart is, has beat faster. Or skipping beats or. Yes, yeah, yeah, skipping beats and stuff like that. Fluttering and stuff. And they get a little concerned, you know. Some of them run to the hospital to see what's wrong and the doctor will come, well, nothing's wrong. Your heart's just beating fast, you know. <laughs> And <laughs> that's because of this tremendous energy that's coming in from the galactic center. Wow. And so this can change everything, you know. And and if we all get together and and put out the, um, or, you know, just love thoughts, some um, thoughts of, of peace and harmony and, and, you know, maybe just meditating or, or maybe um, uh, chanting too, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Whatever it brings in a high frequency or whatever you feel like doing, mm -hmm. um, as this energy comes in on Saturday, and might want to focus on the 1111 too, because um, that's when it is exact. So okay. it'll be at what time on Saturday, the July 7th? Will that, is it just an all day thing or? Oh, 1111 a.m. Okay, on Saturday. Now on yeah. the 8th, uh, is the Hathor a meditation, right? Um, that's on Sunday. Oh, on Sunday. Okay, on uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, so it will continue. And, okay. and this is really interesting, too, because um, uh, the Hathers, uh, Tom Canyon and his group, were here in Seattle on Easter, and they had a big gathering here. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Mary Magdalene um, was blessing the area. And so what I've heard is that the uh, seeds that were planted at Easter will begin to flower with the 777, and um, on, and which will flow over into Sunday too. Oh, good. And they will be doing their final meditation for the weekend. Now, will those energies then? Uh, does the does the do the gates close and then the energies are, uh, you know, do they shift back again or how does does it? I don't think so. I think it stays open because there's a big celebration um, set up for July 17th too. Yes, let's talk about July 17th. Cause that's okay, also, and that's like um, a fire the grid yeah. um, vibration that that is becoming very massive in its scope too. Yes, and yes, so there, you know, when these things happen, there has to be a reason for it. Yeah, and just the fact that a whole lot of people are on the same wavelength. Yes, yes, it can make a, a big difference. And so, like on Saturday, Mercury's retrograde. Well, by the seventeenth, Mercury will be direct, and wow. so it gives like a nine-day doorway. Uh, from the seventh to the seventeenth, uh -huh. where we'll be we will be feeling this energy, Do you and think and it's kind of like a celebration type of an energy, um, because for the past well past year, Saturn has been or Neptune has been exactly opposing Saturn. Okay. And Neptune is a goddess energy. And Saturn is, well, they always said Saturn was Satan, you know. Right. It brings you your lessons. Right. Okay, so for the, this past year, which has been very, very difficult for so many people. Yes, it has. It's because that vibration brings up all of your fears to look at. And well, so the past year has been major cleansing. Yes. Especially since um, last fall around September. Yes. It got really heavy at that time. Yes. Yeah. And it's that's been definitely. going strong since then with the with the cleansing and everyone looking at their fears. And and so um people have had to focus on that and they really couldn't do much of anything else because everything would just come up in your face, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well you had to look at it, you didn't have any choice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well as of the spring equin or summer solstice um, that energy is now 
starting to move apart. And okay. so um, it's fading away. And so it's like, okay, that cycle is over. The war within us is over now. Oh, good. And so now it's time to act. Oh, good. So we've had a chance for to have our stuff come up and to process and to release and and to work through things. And now is the time to to heal and and move forward. That's right. And celebrate. Now, what about um, certainly the dark <laughs> the dark forces, uh, dark T-shirts must know about these various events and what's happening. Uh, isn't it possible that they could uh, insert another uh, cosmic failure or some kind of uh, war or some kind of horrific event to throw everything off balance? Well, that is a possibility. That is a real possibility. Um, because there's a major aspect coming up the end of July mm -hmm. um, where Saturn and Mars are in a square aspect, which mm -hmm. brings up violence and possible war type of stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know? And so... Um, they might be, because they know that they're on their last last throws, mm -hmm. you know, and so they might try to throw a monkey wrench in it. Mm -hmm. And so we have to stay vigilant and keep the love flowing to Earth mm -hmm. um, so it overrides that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that everything's going to be love and peace on Earth after after July 17th. Right. But um, uh, those that have been working for the light for such a long period of time, that all the good things will start coming to them, you know. And and if you're vibrating at a certain frequency, what goes on around you at a lower frequency, you're not even aware of. <laughs> it doesn't bother you. you that's know? right. That's right. And and I know a lot of people are are um, starting to become invisible, and so they're going into a higher frequency. Huh. And that's a really interesting concept too. That's been going on for quite a while for for some people. And so we've been um, dimension hopping, I think, for a, quite a while. I and, have heard that consistently. And, yeah. And it's my understanding that in 1987, mm -hmm. after the harmonic convergence, mm -hmm. that we um, uh, jumped a timeline and we went into the fourth dimension at that time. Oh, really? And the fourth dimension is where... Everything. It's like the astral plane. It's like the dream world uh -huh. where everything that there is exists. Right. You know, and before that time period, I mean, the psychic work, you didn't hear hardly anything about it, you know. That's and, true. That's and all true. of a sudden we have the the program Coast to Coast that, that comes on and goes crazy, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. the time people are opening up. Yeah. yeah. And also there's, there's all these UFOs out there and everything where where there weren't that many people seeing them, but all of a sudden, since 1987, they started seeing them because they were, we were in a different frequency. Wow. And the fourth dimension is the dimension of time. Mm hmm And you can tell how fast time is speeded up. It's I mean, time that way going to really, really, really fast. Yeah, yeah. It seems like you no sooner get up in the morning than you go to bed at night. <laughs> well, according to the Mayan prophecy, um, Supposedly, everything is speeding up exponentially on a daily basis. You know, it, until it is, right. 2012. But now we spoke briefly about 2012 being, you know, the actual date of the shift and and the time when people will either be lifted or ascend or or uh, you know, in Revelations they talk about uh, what's the word for it. Uh, the rapture. The rapture, right. Uh -huh. um, what's your feeling about that? I mean, are there as many realities as there are people? or I, you... I think that there are. Really? Yeah, I think that we all have our own reality and we create it, you know, which is what makes life very interesting. Yeah, yeah. But my interpretation through Revelations is that this is the ending year, um, 2007, when Jupiter and Pluto both align with the galactic center. Uh-huh. Jupiter is a gigantic planet. Yeah, yeah. And, and it... Um, you know, brings in a whole lot of energy. And so with all of that energy coming to us, to Earth, uh -huh. you know, I think that this is a definite shift in time. And also with the Bible prophecies, um, um, there's, you know, like different places in the Bible where it says that there'll be, uh, first there'll be a peace treaty signed in Israel, uh -huh. and then there'll be seven years of peace, and after that will come the seven years of war in uh -huh. Israel and the Middle East. And and so there was a peace treaty signed on September 13th of 1993 between um, President Clinton, Arafat, and the President of Israel. Okay. Well, seven years later, in September of 2000, 
is where the fighting just started like crazy in Israel. Yeah. You know, exactly, seven years later. Really? And that's been, and this is 2007, it's been going on for seven years now. Right, yeah. Wow. So this September of this year is um, the ending of this seven year cycle. Huh, now does it, what comes after that according to Revelations? Um, well, there's, there's a couple things. Where we are right now, um, we're in the kind of like the last kingdom that comes to power. Okay. And um, it talks about, um, this is actually not in Revelations. This is in the Apotheca, a book that was taken out of the, the Bible. Okay. And the Revelations were given to Ezra that weren't given to Revelations. And, and so it goes on and talks about the final kingdom, which is, which is the eagle with 12 wings, which is the European common market. Oh. Um, the 12 stars is a symbol of their unit. Okay. And it talks about in there how a woman will sit on top of the beast. And um, there's now a woman that's in a head of the uh, European common market. Yes, I noticed that. Right. And, and so um, this kingdom is in place and has been in place since the beginning of the year. Huh. But it also says that it won't last very long. And so... Um, with that, there, there's, um, uh, they're trying to take power, you know, and let the United States kind of, um, you know, have some challenges. Mm -hmm. And since the beginning of the year, um, the, the United States dollar is worth about 70 cents um, in conjunction with the euro. And I just noted today that it's going down even faster over, uh, according to, uh, you know, some, in relation to some of the other, uh, mon monies as well. Uh huh. Um, and there's also supposed to be, um, some kind of American union between Canada and Mexico that they've been trying to sneak right. through without um, I'm, our, I'm underneath not too the sure wire. that will come to power, but then if we dimension hop, you know, it might be in power on a lower dimension earth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's really hard to prophesize with that, you know, because because we are, have reached the point where um, we'll get, you know, we're almost shifting into the fifth dimension. Okay. Where we go into it a little bit. When we get to the point where there's no time, we know that we're in the fifth dimension. Yeah, yeah. And and when we get into that, then everything's different. But still on the fourth dimension, Earth, um, and R the Russian, um, Putin, um, he really enjoys his power. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, like he's been, um, he told the Europe that he would only sell them the gas and the rubles. Uh-huh. You know? And so here we have them buying oil and the euro, you know, the other countries, and then, then gas from Russia and <laughs> the rubles. Right. And so it looks like they're trying to take, take power. Uh-huh. And then we have China, you know? And so the, the final um, prophecies in Revelations, as far as I can tell, is when Russia and China are together, and they go against the United States. And then there's well, some Everyone kind of... thought that would be a war, you know, but, uh -huh. but what type of war? You know, we're in the fourth dimension. Could it be a mind war? Yeah. You know, instead of a regular fighting war? Yeah. Could it be a financial thing? Yeah. Where they try to take over through financial power? That's quite possible. Then there's weather wars as well. Yes, that's true. Oh, and the earth changes. Earth changes will, will go on for quite a while. You know, and we're coming into some major ones. Huh. So you think that there really will be? We, we, it seems like we haven't had that much, but, you know, I could, maybe I'm not paying attention to the signs. Uh-huh. Um, well, I think that, you know, like, well, it started out um, basically with a tsunami. Okay. Because you know, that was a major thing. And what is instigating the, that kind of change is that um, the planet Uranus, Uranus, um, which rules change, went into Pisces in 2003. Okay. Um, it, it's a seven-year cycle, and it will be in the water sign of Pisces for um, seven years. Huh. And so we'll have major changes by water until 2010. Oh. And that's when the um, Kali Yuga system, the Vedic system, says that the changes end in 2010. Oh, really? Yeah. And so, and that's there, I think they're basing it on with Uranus going through the signs. Okay. And so the area that, that um, Uranus is ruling is over in the South Pacific, you know? Uh -huh. So it started over there with a tsunami. Oh, yeah. And then there's been, 
and been all kinds of floods. And, I mean, we had a, a f- tremendous storms and floods in Seattle last um, December. Uh-huh. I mean, like we haven't had in years. And so there are storms like that. And then Katrina coming in, you know, wiping out a city. Oh, yeah. And Jeez. the poles melting um, like they have been. And, and they estimate that, that if the poles continue to melt like they are, that a lot of the... Um, like um, Long Island and New York, and that will be covered by water within five years. Yeah, yeah. Which brings us up to 212. And I'm sure that the 212 is based on a date, too, you know, because uh-huh. there are different dates that happen with different events happening. And um, but right now we are in a, a major turning point. For the better. <laughs> <laughs> or right. Potentially for the better. Right. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it sounds Very that way definitely. to me. It, it's like the light has finally won, <laughs> you know, and, and the dark has still have to play out their their thing. Right, right. Um, so it might appear to be darker for a little longer, uh-huh. but actually they're fading. And um, uh, Pluto, which is a very, very powerful planet, even though they de- did demote it to a dwarf planet. Yeah, poor We thing. now have eight major planets and four dwarf planets. Uh-huh. Um, anyways, Pluto still has a tremendous amount of power, especially sitting at the, uh, lined up with the galactic center like it is. Uh-huh. And um, so uh, with the end of this year, Pluto will move into Capricorn. It's been in Sagittarius. When it moves into Capricorn, Capricorn rules governments. Oh. So there's going to be start being a major transformation in our governing system. And that's when? Um, it starts in January. In Jan- so in other words, that'll be about uh, the beginning of the uh, the, the uh, new elections and so on and so forth. Right. Wow. wow. And there's other planets that are changing too, like um, Saturn will be moving out of Leo mm-hmm. into Virgo, the goddess. Oh, okay. And that happens on September 3rd. Ah. And so that starts a whole new two-and-a-half-year cycle. So would, would, would that indicate that the goddess energy might be prevalent at that time? Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. And we so love the goddess if you take energy. that into consideration with the elections coming up. Wow. Oh, yes. And there is a woman running, too, isn't there? Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure that she'll be the president. I, I don't really know. I haven't really looked at that. But if it's, it, it's the goddess energy. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be a woman. No, no. It could be a woman, but it could be a very gentle man. Yes. Um, someone that's of a, uh, a light, you know, with yeah. lots of light. Well, somebody would almost have to come out of nowhere because... Uh, the that's pres- a possibility. You know, it just uh, doesn't seem to be there at the moment. Yeah, that's a real possibility. Yeah. That could happen. In fact, I mean, the whole political structure needs to be completely altered and probably brought down and started from scratch. Uh-huh, right. You know, um, and there's also another thing, you know, as far as Revelations goes. Uh-huh, what's that? Okay, well, um, um, the war in Iraq, where the um, 17th and 18th chapter, it talks all about um, the war in Iraq and how baby lo- Babylon fell, uh-huh. you know. And and that was exactly what happened, you know. And so we have um, completed or are in the throes of completing um, the 17th and 18th chapter of Revelations. And then how many more more chapters are there? There's only 20 chapters. The 19th and the 20th chapter, in my the way I interpret it, Uh is the downfall of the controllers. Which would be the leaders of of the... The dark leaders. The dark leaders, yes. Right. And of course, we've we've heard so much about the you know the various controlling forces that really run the country, the Illuminati and the the Bilderbergs and you know others who are you know actually pulling the strings behind the scenes, um, thanks right. to Coast to Coast and other shows. Uh huh. So uh, you know, it seems that that would need to be uh, corrected. <laughs> uh-huh, right. We could... And it's already. Um, I mean, like Saddam Hussein. This is really interesting too, because um, one of Nostradamus's prophecies was that um, a leader would come to power in the Middle East. Uh-huh. Um, you know, in um, Babylon. You know, Iraq. Okay. Um, and that he would would have a 27-year war. 
Huh. And in September of 1979, um, he attacked Iran. Uh huh. And the war has continued. And 27 years later, you know, it comes up to, to the end of 2006 when he left. Wow. And I found that that was really interesting, too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so, um, but a lot, a lot of the different, I mean, look at all the, the people, our leaders that have resigned or, you know, one thing or another has happened to them uh, in the last couple of years. You know, there, there's been a lot of people who have just, you know, said, that's it, you know, I'm yeah. not going to be here anymore. Yeah, yeah. I guess they didn't really like what was going on too much, and so they just decided to, to stop. Yeah, but that seems like that's what's happening. But, of course, it's so difficult to interpret things because we don't really get the accurate information. That's true. You know, we're not getting the truth out of the media, and uh -huh. everything that we get is distorted or lies or manipulation uh, designed to serve, you know, whatever purposes the people in power choose to serve, and that seems to be selfish, selfish interests. Right. <clears throat> and so um, with this coming up here and also... Jupiter will be going into Capricorn too. Okay. Um, in December, at the end of this year. Okay. Did along have... with Pluto. Okay. And so they'll both be moving over there. And so with it being in Capricorn, um, this rules like business and big business and government and materialism and and Pluto's a transformer. Oh, good. And so we're going to see a lot of transformation coming um, within the next year. Oh, good. Good. Well, it's true. It's about time, isn't it? Uh huh. It is, right? Yeah. I and mean, it just seems like it's just time for all the ridiculousness to stop, and the the greed and the war and the, you know, our isolation and our our, you know, just all of it. <laughs> right. I agree with you a hundred percent. You know, I think <laughs> yeah. everybody. And it's been so hard on so many people. You yeah. know, especially you know people that are empaths and feel all the emotions that that go on in the earth. It's just been extremely hard for them. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, I have, it's just, and, and um, they feel the emotions, and then they become depressed and don't want to be here, you know, because it's just too hard to live yeah. on the earth in the condition that it is. Yeah. Well, then there's a lot of the new kids that are coming in, too. Isn't, isn't that true? The indigos and the crystals and so on and so forth. Oh, like. yes, yes. Um, the indigos are a little older, and so they're the ones who will basically change the, the, the world. It's my understanding that there's, like, two different vibrations with them. Like, the indigos are, are the kids that are a little radical. Right. And they're system busters. Uh-huh. And then the crystals that come in, they're the real, really gentle, loving energy. Uh-huh. You know, and they're here to set up a new system of things. That's, and, yeah, yeah. And so they kind of need to be protected and stuff because of the harsh energy that's been out there. Yeah. You know, until they can come up and, and bring the, the love energy. Mm -hmm. And so there's, you'll see a lot of, of teenagers coming out and young people, you know, and they're, they're going to bring in a lot of change. Well, you know, I was reading... Uh, and there were, there's a lot of older indigos, too, that, that came in as system busters, you know? Like us. <laughs> yes, right, yeah. <laughs> and have been bringing in information and, and everything starting to change. And, and I would really say that the turning point was 1987, and then everything opened wide up. Yeah, yeah. And so now, right now, in 2007, we're at another turning point. Wow. And we have the possibility of jumping into the fifth dimension. Wow. And the fifth dimension is, is it's a beautiful, bright pink. Okay. You know, um, which is, you know, pink has always been considered with love. Mm-hmm. And so, and like a heart chakra, you know, a heart chakra is green, and then the inner core of it is this beautiful um, pink wow. love vibration. Wow. You know, and they say like the threefold flame that's in there too. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, that's that's a love in. And so, when Jesus says, you know, go within, is to go within to that love vibration and find uh -huh. your your connection with Source. And uh, you, and now the possibility with all the energy from the galactic center coming up. And, and you then, know, I had um, the uh, Soho satellite had taken a picture of the galactic center uh -huh. a while back, and I had. Um, uh, printed the picture off, 
and it's a beautiful, beautiful color of um, red pink. Huh. Yeah, and so that's, you know, kind of like the energy that's coming in. Now, yeah. what about the actual, <clears throat> in 2012, There's uh, I asked you about this earlier, the actual galactic alignment. Um, what is the significance of the, the all of that happening in 2012? Um, I haven't quite figured that out yet. It might be simply that um, we'll be entirely in the fifth dimension at that time. Uh-huh. You know, because there, there's different levels of each 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 dimension. There's different levels. You know, right, um, right. Like we've been jumping back and forth between the fourth and a lot of people have been jumping back and forth between the fourth and fifth dimension for a uh, long time. Uh huh. You know, and you're feeling really good and happy and mm-hmm. and just full of energy. Then you're vibrating at the fifth dimension, and then you come back down into the oh, I don't have any energy. I'm so depressed type of thing. You know. Yep. And yeah, that's the fourth I know dimension that one. energy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's been for me. That's for and sure. so when you get into the energy of the love, the joy, the happiness, that's the fifth dimension energy. Okay. And it would be so nice to get into that energy and stay, stay there. there. <laughs> yeah, with no no vibrating back and forth. Right, right. <laughs> that's what's so difficult, I think, is this going back and forth and then just being exposed to, uh, you know, lower third density vibrations and, you know, and the, the craziness from the fourth dimension, which can be pretty wacky, too. Uh-huh. Right, yeah. You know, so, uh, but being able to stay there with others of like mind, you know, and heart. <laughs> right. You know, that, united that really and not nice, divided. Yeah. So it might take us up till 2012 to get, you know, whole... into, entirely into that vibration for everyone. Well, not everyone, because I don't think everyone on Earth will are capable of getting into that vibration. Right. A lot of people say that the whole Earth is moving up, you know, but, I mean, there's so many different vibrations on Earth, you know, that that's not logical to me. Uh-huh. You know, it seems like everyone will, will be wherever they're supposed to be, you know, according to what they choose to experience. Well, now, if the Earth is moving up herself, and 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 the lit- and the and the actual physical planet raises its own density, then that would imply that we would have to raise with it or continue on in some other third dimensional uh, form. Right. But not here. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, unless the Earth splits apart. You know, yeah. someone told me one time that the Earth was gonna it was gonna be like peeling an onion. Huh. You know, and and how how and I. So I've been thought about that analogy, you know, and, yeah. and how maybe the fifth dimension just breaks away from from the Earth that we have. Well, is it, there's also a theory that there's an inner Earth as well where the Lemurians are located. Yes, there is. So, you know, maybe that's another option, too, that the Lemurians are stepping in. And, you know, I, I know we've got a lot of help here on the planet. I was just reading about how uh, uh, some, of, some light beings from the sixth, uh, but fifth, sixth, and seventh dimensions have uh, incarnated in order to help during the shift too. So we don't uh-huh. know who's who's who on the planet. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a lot of light beings that that um, decided to come here to help the planet. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, there is a lot mm-hmm. um, because, like, um, through my networking, I'm totally amazed at how many light beings there are out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's more than I ever imagined there could mm-hmm. possibly be. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great, isn't And it? the Internet is wonderful because it's connecting up everyone. Yes, yes. You know? Yeah, So the Internet great. can be used for a very good cause, or, or it's also there's a lot of garbage on there, too, you know? Yeah. But it is um, connecting everyone up worldwide. Yes. And yeah. look at, like, with the 7-7 celebration coming up here. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, it's all over the Internet. Yes, and it seems like it's happening faster, doesn't it? Yes, it does. The right. information is just, it's coming out, and then boom, it's getting out there to people, and, and you can actually tell that people are getting it uh, a lot faster. Oh, yes. Um, now, what about, uh, some? I've read some stuff about Zechariah Sitchin and the Photon Belt and Planet X. Uh-huh. 
Um, what do you? What can you say about Planet X? Is that a reality, or is that just something that you know? Is that something we even need to think about? <laughs> Well, you know, there's been so much information on that, or disinformation, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I've heard that the Vatican actually built a bunch of telescopes around the world so that they could watch it coming in. Uh -huh. And I know that in Zachariah Stitchkin's book, it said that we would start feeling the effects from the planet long before it got here, uh -huh. and that the first thing that would happen would that the poles would start to melt. Well, it's happening. Right. And so I thought, well, you know, this you know, putting the two two together, I says, well, if the poles are melting, you know, and, and all of the planets in our solar system have changed. See, you know, the... So something out there has to be causing them to change. Yeah, yeah. So what is it that's causing them to change, you know? Yeah. Is it the energy from from planet X? Is it the uh, um, energy coming in from the galactic center? Is it the gamma ray burst coming in? Yeah. Um, what is it? And, and what caused... Um, Uranus and Neptune to have pole shifts. They've already had their pole shifts. That's right, they have. And they, even the sun has done it, hasn't it? Yes. Well, the sun does it um, quite often, so that's not un that unusual. Okay. But it's very unusual for for Uranus and Neptune to have a wow. pole shift, you know? Yeah. Jupiter had the comets that went into it. Um, Saturn um, had something, some kind of explosion that happened on it. This was in 1987. Okay. And this was amazing. There was was this total white field around Saturn. And I thought, oh, my God, this goes along with the, the harmonic convergence, you know? Uh -huh. It's like Saturn, Satan is being released on a higher level. Oh. Now, all we have to do is change our reality uh -huh. to look at Saturn as being the bringer of rewards. Oh, Instead of the taskmaster, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, but sometimes, you know, what happens on the higher level, it takes a while to get here. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and so, basically, and then um, Mercury, um, there was a picture on Soho of Mercury and Mars. They had both been been um, not hit by comets, but, but that the um, stuff from the comets had gone into the planets. Okay. Well, and this was, I don't know, about four or five years ago. Uh-huh. And I printed off the pictures of that, too, and I thought, well, wow, all the planets in our solar system have gone through their change except for us. Oh. And the atmosphere has changed, the sun, atmosphere and the sun has changed, the atmosphere and all the planets have changed. And there's quite a bit of solar flares and sunspots, aren't there? This is, uh, we're moving into that uh, period when it, uh, it's, uh, going to become active, like up until 2012. Right, which which is supposed to climax in 2012, and that might be another another thing that the the um, Mayan calendar is based on is the climax of the solar flares. Yeah, and so well, the sun rules our little galaxy, and when the solar flares happen, they really affect people. Uh huh. Yeah. You know because they hit um, the photons from it hit. Um, well, it affects the Earth, too, because it hits the Earth's magnetic field. Uh -huh. It also hits the people's magnetic field. <laughs> you know, we've got magnets in our brains. Uh -huh. And so when the photon energy comes in, it affects the brain. And, and people that can't handle it, they go a little crazy. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. when the solar flares happen. And if, if when there's a large solar flare, there's always an Earth event within 24 hours of the flare. Huh. And I've watched that for years. It's just like clockwork. Wow. And so, um, you know, everything, everything's interconnected. Everything affects everything else. Uh-huh. And today I just um, uh, printed off a picture of these um, luminescent clouds that are over the Arctic. And I don't know what that's from. Um, uh, the I scientists don't know what that's from either, but they're beautiful. Wow. Well, it probably isn't from HARP. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> No, um, and this has been going on for, I don't know, three or four years, but huh. this year they seem to be especially beautiful. Huh. You know, they're different colors and stuff, and just kind of like the northern lights. Wow. And and it's really, really, really pretty. So there's all kinds of things that are going on right now. And so with us being in this special time here now, uh -huh. you know, with the 7-7 seven, seven and being able to use this time period... Um, up until August 12th um, to heal the old Atlantis energy. And there are a lot of people here um, that lived at the time of Atlantis. Yes, yes. And either they were, um, 
you know, either good or bad. Well, there's no good or bad. I mean, everything just is, you know. Right. That some people, you know, one life you play the the dark T-shirt, next life you play the light T-shirt, you know. Right, right. And and so, um, but the people that were born with Pluto in Leo, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of those were here during the time of Atlantis. And so for the last two years, with Saturn going through Leo, you know, it's been activating their energy. And huh. so now we've reached the crisis of it where it can be changed. And that's the period that we're coming up on right now. Yes, starting on Saturday. Wow. It's a very, very important time period. Wow. And so if everyone could just, I mean, the power of thought is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And so if everyone who's listening to this program, you know, could just focus on good thoughts. Yes. And bringing in the light energy. Yes. And um, do whatever they want to do to, you know, um, because it's time to be happy, you know, it's like to dance and to sing and to chant and, you know, change the frequency, heal that missing chord yes, that yeah. we're working on. Yeah. That's so important. People don't realize how important that was. Yeah. I mean, by that planet being destroyed, it just changed everything in our solar system and threw everything out of whack. That was some kind of battle out in space, wasn't it? Well, it's my understanding that, yes, it was. It was my understanding that um, uh, masters, or not masters, but people from Jupiter, um, and then they say, well, you know, like there's a program on NOVA that says, well, no one can live on Jupiter. It's a gaseous planet. But, you know, there's things that we don't really know. Right. And different frequencies can live on different things. Exactly. And stuff, you know, or, or maybe inside of Jupiter there might be a, a civilization there that's not even affected by the outer core. Exactly. You know, we don't really know. Right. But anyways, it's my, my understanding that there were um, some people on Jupiter um, that sent out this beam that destroyed Maldek because they were fighting. They were in a war with it. Right. They didn't like it. Um, uh, Maldak, another um, word for Maldak is Lucifer. Ah. And Lucifer, it's it's the energy of light. And I think that there's been a total misinterpretation of what's going on, you know, for such a long time. And I, we've just been fed disinformation for so long. And so yeah. um, to get to the truth, you have to think outside of the box. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and really realize it. And so um, that planet was... a uh, a planet of light, of tremendous light. Uh -huh. and at least it's my understanding, and there was happiness and joy and everything there. And the Dark Lords were jealous of it, so they destroyed it, and it fell to Earth. Huh. And um, so that's... I know that the, according to David Icke, the uh, Earth is under control by, of the reptilian factions. Yes. Renegade and reptilian. that's from the Satan um, group. Yeah, and and that would make sense with all of the uh, ancient depictions of uh, you know reptilian types of beings with horns and red eyes and so on yes. and so forth. Right, and that's where the the um, uh, our picture of it came from, I think. <laughs> right, which is not to say that all reptilians are bad. No, no, I don't think that they are because there's you can't say anything is really good or bad, you know. Right. Um, because. I'm sure that there's lots of reptilians that are working for the betterment of mankind, too, because exactly. that's a huge race. Exactly. And, you know, it only takes a few bad apples to give them a bad name, you exactly. know, and so the the negative ones, they've controlled the earth for a long time and wish to continue to control it, mm -hmm. but I think that their time of control is about up. Well, let's hope so, and let's hope that there is a divine plan that uh, that our Creator, whoever or whatever it is, all right. it is, <laughs> that's right. You know, has uh, has uh, in store for us. I mean, you know, I, I like to believe that anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it's my understanding that actually the Earth is the newest and the best. Huh. And it's a great experiment. Uh huh. And that when we finally get it together and are able to manifest love on Earth. Mm. We'll be able to bridge all of the dimensions. Wow. And that's never happened before. Wow. And we're also finishing up a cycle, you know, like a, uh, a billions of years cycle. Uh -huh. I mean, a huge cycle. I don't even know how, how, how billion it is, you know. Uh -huh. Um, it's a cycle from when our solar system was created. 
or our universe was created. Uh -huh. Our universe was created on a polarity basis, uh -huh. and that was an experiment too. And so now we're moving into the oneness where we're all one, and the polarity is you know playing out the the light and the dark. Uh huh. And so that's coming to an end. Well, it seems like it's played out all of the possibilities, you know. I mean, I think so. It, it, it just, you know, now it's just a repetition of everything. And and if it were to continue, then you'd have the the people in power continuing to control and and create more power and destroy that which is below it, and so on and uh -huh. so forth. And it, it certainly feels like that's not going to happen. Right. And I think that power is the last lesson you have to learn before you become a master of light. Uh-huh. I think that's the hardest lesson that there probably is to learn. Yes. Yes. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. You know, the, a and, lot And so sense. that's what we've, we've been experiencing, you know. And I don't think it's going to last much longer. <laughs> you know, this year might be the end of the power. Wow, that would be so wonderful if that were true. I mean, yeah. and, and I prefer to believe that that is true. Right, so we just have to see, you know, because, I mean, who knows for sure. Right, right. You know, so we just have to wait and see how things are played out. Yeah. But I I think that um, that there's a lot, you know, because just the fact that Jupiter and Pluto are conjunct the galactic center, uh -huh. all that energy coming in, that, you know. That should be amazing. Uh, we should We should all be able to feel that to some extent, wouldn't you think? Oh, I think so. I think that we've been feeling the galactic energy all year. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's what's been putting all this stuff in our face, you know. Yeah. Because it's been pulling out all of the garbage. Yeah, yeah. Before the light comes in, because it's always darkest before the dawn. Yep. And then, of course, with Mercury going back uh, from retrograde, that will happen around the 17th of this month? Yes. Well, it happens before then. Before then. Okay, good. But it will be in its direct motion on the 17th. Wow. You know, so... So, like right now on, on the Saturday, um, it's like um, like they were saying that they need two pulses to be ignited. And the first pulse on the opening of the Syrian Stargate on July 7th, and then the second pulse on July 17th. And where does the second pulse come from? Um, all the people firing the grid. Firing the grid, right. Yeah, right, it comes from right. mass consciousness. Right, and of course that um, that's supposed to be quite a powerful event, too. If we were all connected, yes. you know, according to uh, what I read from her site, Shelley Yates, um, uh, everything operates within a grid, but we disconnected ourselves from the grid because we didn't want to experience the unity. We wanted the separation, and so this might be an opportunity for us to reconnect on that level. In fact, I was just watching uh, a movie about 2012, and it talks about uh, mankind becoming telepathic. Uh -huh. And so the need for lying and manipulating, of course, would disappear because we, we all would understand and we would, would vibrate at the level where we, we just know each other. You know, we just are able to communicate telepathically. So, right. you know, there, that, that would uh, preclude the ability to be tricked or fooled or, you know. Definitely. You know, politics as normal would certainly go out the window, at least on, for those that were connected to the grid. It sure would be. So. Yeah, right, yeah. And, and you know, um, uh, Chiron, you know, um, they've been working on, they were working on the Christ grid for a long time. Oh, yeah. You know, so that's the one to fire up. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we, we definitely need the Christ energy here, don't we? Well, I think right. it's here. I think it's alive and well, and, and it's in our hearts. Well, you know, um, this is year of the return of Quetzalcoatl. Oh, it is. Yes, uh, from last November to the coming up November. Oh. And you know, Quetzalcoatl is known as um, the feathered serpent. Yeah. Did you see a picture of the comet that came by in January? No, I didn't. Oh, it was just absolutely gorgeous. Huh. It was. It just um, was a bunch of feathers. You know, when they took a picture of it. Uh. -huh. It was like the feathered serpent. Wow. Wow. Thought, so this wow, is all this happening. Is so interesting. Wow. Um, Mahala, when, uh, before we get to, to the end of the hour, I want to make sure that people know where to read your planetary alerts and how to get a hold of you. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> I guess that, yeah. Um, well, we've had some challenges with our website, so my most recent planet alerts um, aren't up there yet. Okay. Um, but you can go into the website. It's um, the old, my old planet alerts are there. Okay. Um, which is www.alcseattle.com. Okay. And then um, you can reach me at um, Mahala, M A H A L A, 22 at msn.com. Okay. Wonderful. And now you're going to be leaving tomorrow for uh, James Gilliland's ranch. Uh, oh, yes, that's getting... so exciting. Yeah, what, what are you going to do there? Um, well, I'll be giving a talk at, uh, at 11 o'clock on Saturday. Oh, how wonderful. Right when that energy comes in. How wonderful. Gee, you know, what, what is James Ranch like? I mean, I, I've heard a little bit about it. It's, um, he's, he's, he's written a wonderful book too, besides being on one of our radio broadcasters here, but. Yes. Oh, um, his ranch is very nice. He has 70 acres there. Uh huh. And it's right at the, uh, foothill of Mount Adams. Mm. And when you look out in the field, there's a big field out in front of his house, and you see this big field, and, uh, last time I was there, it was just covered with, with flowers. Oh, my. It was really pretty, and then uh, Mount Adams right in the background. Wow. It's, it's really, really a nice place. And thousands and thousands of people have gone up there to uh, take a look at for UFOs and stuff and have seen them and recorded them. Is that not true? Oh, yes, that's true. Oh, my. Well, you know, I wish you the, the best trip tomorrow, and I'll be doing my thing, too, just as uh, all the listeners probably will be doing it in their own uh, unique ways. Uh-huh. And um, maybe when you get back, you can, you'll be writing a uh a planetary alert uh, for us that will help us to uh, put this, the pieces together. You know, it definitely helps when we have people like you to to help guide us through these things. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and yeah, thank you so fun. much for being on the show tonight. I'm so glad you were able to do it, and I'd love to have you back again too. Oh, I'd love to. Okay, good, wonderful. Well, is it? Do you have any parting words for our audience or listeners? Oh, well, no. Just everyone. Um, Tune in on July 7th and July 17th. <laughs> okay. And let's, let's, let's do our thing. <laughs> wonderful. Well, uh, thanks a million, Mahal, and have a wonderful trip tomorrow, and uh, say hello to James for me. I will. All right. Thanks okay. again. Thank you very much. Okay. Good night, everybody.